able to see my screen, I believe. So let me uh, explain about the course details, not more than in just 10 to 15 minutes, even not, it will take 15 minutes. So just 10 minutes, I will wind it up. So course name is um, Kafka. Actually, the title you might have seen Apache Kafka, right? So Apache Kafka is the title, but we also will discuss about the Confident Kafka. I'll come to that point. But the course name is Apache Kafka and the course duration is three weekends, three weekends. So that means as today is the demo, you have to ignore this week. So ignore, ignore today. So whatever is happening, just ignore today. And from today onwards, you consider three weekends. The course duration is three weekends. And you might have known the course fee is 1500 INR. And what you will get with this course fee, you will get the course material. Of course, you might have seen the emails from the Microsoft also. They might have mentioned the same in the email. So course material, recorded videos, for three months validity. So this is very important. So three months validity will give the three months validity. Course material and recordings, both are valid for three months. So recordings, <clears throat> course material, course material can be downloadable. So this is what downloadable. You guys have to download and then keep it with you. But the recorded videos are not downloadable or not shareable. So please have a clear difference here, okay, between the uh, notes and in the recordings. <clears throat> right. So course material is downloadable, whereas the recorded videos not downloadable and not shareable. So every week, weekend in the sense Saturday and then Sunday, right? So every weekend, the duration of the session, every weekend, the duration of the session, let us discuss is 9 a.m. to 9 a.m. to 12 p.m. So mostly every, every, every weekend day per day, minimum three hours of the session is required to be happened. Okay, 9 to 12. Don't worry, with the smaller breaks, with the smaller breaks, every 45 minutes, I'll give one small break and with the smaller breaks, let us spend uh, three hours in a day. So only Saturday and then Sunday. Saturday, three hours, Sunday, three hours, 9 a.m. to 12 p.m. Okay, so this is in short about the course details. Course name is Apache Kafka. Duration is three weekends. You have to ignore today. So count from tomorrow onwards. And course fee is 1500 INR. Course material, recorded videos with the three months validity will be provided to you. And course material is downloadable. Course material is downloadable. Whereas the recorded videos are not downloadable or not shareable. Have a please, please have a clear difference here. Because most of the people we have seen, they, they, they thought like, you know, videos can also be downloadable. No, that, that, that is what I'm not saying. That is what not I'm saying. Course material is only downloadable, but recorded videos are not downloadable. <clears throat> okay. Duration is from 9 a.m. to 12 p.m. Three hours with the smaller breaks will continue. Okay. Right. So three weekends, the total course completed by the three weekends here are there. If it will be extend, you consider one week might get extended because while the session is happening, you may be asked the number of questions to be right. Sometimes that question hours may eat our time, but yes, question hour is required actually. If that is the case, then it might take one more week as well. So please be stretchable for that one. Okay, so this is about the course details in short. <clears throat> Fine. Uh, what is this? Someone sent a photo. Okay. Okay. Fine. Uh, okay. Fine. 
Okay, fine. So I hope you got the course details. Um, uh, we received email with Zoom link saying, please correct it. Okay. Three weekends, meaning only Sunday and Saturday. No, not three weeks. There is a difference between the week and then weekends. Sachin, observe the weekends. Weekends. Weekends meaning, okay, let me clearly write it. Saturday and Sunday. Saturday and Sunday. Weekend meaning only Saturday and then Sunday. Every day, Saturday three hours and then Sunday three hours. Perfect. So this is about the course details. Okay. Why, why are you came here to learn this course? Two reasons I can, meaning maybe I'm expecting uh, a, a, because of the two reasons. So one might be interview. <laughs> Right. So interviewers are asking the questions on Kafka. Questions on Kafka. Because you might have mentioned in the resume as you are working on microservices architecture. Right. So as you have mentioned it as the microservices architecture, he expect event sourcing platform as one of your skill set as well. So that might be the reason, reason you came here to learn the Kafka. Maybe technology enthusiasts, you are all maybe the technology enthusiasts. So you want to explore the new technologies, then probably you came here. However, welcome to Apache Kafka, three weekends course, three weekends. Fine, now let us go to, let us go to the course content. Before going to the course content, let me explain how I have designed the course. Then I'll go into the course content. Then we will start a discussion on the course content, meaning the course, actual course will jump into the actual course. So let us now see. <clears throat> okay, one moment, guys, one moment. Let me clear out all your questions here. I forgot to mention one more thing. Prerequisite. So what, it, what are the prerequisite? Here, here, the prerequisite is Spring Boot. You, of course, uh, if you don't know Spring Boot also, you can attend and then learn the concept of the Kafka. But here, we will do the two projects. I'll explain that agenda. In agenda, I'll explain. So those two projects will do um, on the Spring Boot and we use the microservices architecture. Okay, don't worry about the microservices architecture. Again, I'll explain it about the microservices architecture, how it will be, but prerequisite should be the Spring Boot. Everybody should have to know about that. I mean, everybody at least should have understanding, not maybe an experience, maybe the knowledge is also good enough. So what is the agenda for us? What you will learn here? what you will learn here. So the agenda is, first, I have divided this course into three parts. I have divided this course into three parts. Part one, part one, Kafka ecosystem. Part two, Kafka streaming Kafka streaming and part three, Kafka connect framework, Kafka connect framework and um, yeah, Kafka connect framework. Yeah, this is enough. So these are the two part, three parts the course has been designed. <clears throat> okay, so these are the three parts the course has been designed. Kafka ecosystem and Kafka streaming and then Kafka connect framework. In our three weekends workshop or three weekends course, I'm going to cover part one, Kafka ecosystem, and I'm going to cover part two, Kafka streaming, but part three, Kafka connect framework, I am not going to cover. So this is, I'm not going to cover. So I'm going to cover only Kafka ecosystem and then Kafka streaming because within the three weekends, 
maximum subject I can fit is Kafka ecosystem and then Kafka streaming. So Kafka connect framework, probably I'll take it as one separate free weekend workshop. No need to pay anything. As a free weekend workshop, I'll conduct this Kafka connect framework. Okay, but for you, your course content includes the Kafka ecosystem and then Kafka streaming. So when you are attending the interview, 80% of the questions, 80% of the interview questions you will get from the Kafka ecosystem. And the rest of the 20% of the questions you can get from the Kafka streaming API. Okay, so this is how the interview pattern is now going on in the market because the experience level of the candidates may be, um, you know, freshers to an architect or senior architect levels, right? Maybe, maybe zero to 2020 20 plus as well. So everyone, the topic is same, Kafka, but the level of questions, the level of the depth, the questions the interviewer will ask will be different. So majority of the folks, um, most of the candidates who are nowadays, you know, uh, switching or, you know, maybe trying to accelerate their career in between the, um, like, you know, two place to mostly 12, 13 or 15 below. That is the case. Kafka ecosystem is very important for them. And of course, Kafka streaming platform is also very important for the architect level job roles or team lead level job roles. But Kafka ecosystem is compulsory. 80 <clears throat> percentage of the questions will ask from the Kafka ecosystem. <clears throat> right. Okay. So is this okay? Some uh, one of the member asked one question actually. Is this uh, only for interview or will cover the uh, working knowledge? Excellent question. I have to uh, answer this question. When you are at okay. If it is an interview course, you don't need to join. Go and then do the Google or do, go and then do the YouTube. You'll get that interview knowledge. Okay. This course is not interview, not, not only the interview course. This course is more than that. Okay. So complete realistic simulation will be here. I'm sure once after attending my session on Apache Kafka, you will be proficient in Apache Kafka. Okay, that I can at that I can assure you. But if it if you guys want only the interview purpose, don't join here. Please don't join my courses if your intention is only the interview. Please go and then do the Google or do the YouTube. Don't join here. Don't waste your time and don't waste my time even. Okay, this is more than that. Not only interview is one of the part. If you if you work well, then you will. Give the interview answers. Interview is just a, just a small thing like, you know, before whatever the work you do, before it, interview is just a small thing. But interview will, will, will cover what your knowledge or experience on the particular topic. Isn't it? Fine. Excellent. Now, Kafka ecosystem and Kafka streaming are the two parts that I'm going to cover here. Okay. Then, what are the projects we're going to cover here? Two projects we're going to do here. Two projects we're going to do here. So what are those two projects? One is, one is movie tickets, generating and validating. Not only movie ticket, I'll, I'll give you the scenarios, various use cases I will give you. And second one is video streaming. Second one is video streaming to the multiple platforms, video streaming to the multiple, multiple platforms. So these two projects we're going to do here. One is movie tickets generating and then validating. Second one is video streaming to the multiple platforms. You can't believe this video streaming. If you go and then search in the Google or YouTube, Apache Kafka, they'll mention streaming apache kafka streaming but they will just give you an example of data streaming but not the video streamings because now when when i am working 
when 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 i worked on the kafka very beginning time for the requirement of the video streaming platform building i struggled a lot actually because in google i have not seen much help one or two one or two blogs or videos in the youtube were helped me but not up to the mark so then then i thought of having one sophisticated document or sophisticated steps where everyone want to learn this video streaming how it can be happened using kafka so that's how i included in this as one of the project fine so this is about the projects this is about the agenda and prerequisite and then the course details hope it is clear for everyone okay in this movie tickets generating and then validating we will have okay i'll i'll give the details about these two projects later at that because i don't want to eat your time in spending this one because you may came here with a lot of expectation so that's all from this course details point of view i believe it is clear for everyone right so prerequisite course details agenda and then the projects what we going to cover probably it is clear for everyone i believe right <clears throat> okay then let us go to the course content because you may most of you guys may have the knowledge on the kafka you might expecting something in the course content right so let us first to see the uh, course content how the course content is okay so go to apache kafka course content part 1 part 1 is what kafka ecosystem kafka ecosystem is the part 1 so as part of the part 1 just i don't take uh, much time guys i'll wind it up in just again 10 more minutes then definitely we'll jump to a, a very good discussion why we need to go for kafka and what is kafka right and how what are the installation models we have and where we can install it how we can install it and kafka uh, one more point as well guys when when most of you guys were surfed over the google you might have seen apache so you might have seen kafka as apache kafka and you might have seen confluent kafka then by looking into this you might got the confusion sir what i have to learn apache kafka or confluent kafka what i have to learn right so maybe this confusion definitely i will clear out here but not now not right now let us move ahead and then continue when time comes i'll clear out this one and with with what we will go i'll explain we'll go with the both apache kafka and then confluent kafka both we will go but what are the differences is what we have to know okay perfect <clears throat> yeah a hey, kafka in the sense we have definitely the sender and then the receiver maybe one sender or many senders one receiver many receiver right kafka messaging between services are two systems it is services systems in the sense service here don't consider system in the sense two laptops no services maybe they deployed on the cloud <clears throat> okay we'll run them uh, on the cloud and the two two applications here i mean to say two applications so we will we will stream the data between the two applications system meaning what actually the system which is running that application is what my meaning okay so kafka apache kafka and then confluent kafka so these two we are going to use in our course but when to use what again we will discuss fine now coming to the course content so first thing is we will discuss why apache kafka and second thing is we'll discuss what is apache kafka and we'll discuss the kafka api overview kafka core api kafka connect framework kafka streams api kafka sql core so we'll have an overview this is very important topic everybody should have to know if you know this clear differences meaning clear apis what kafka is offering 
Kafka core, Kafka connect, Kafka stream, Kafka SQL code, what contains each. If you have a clear understanding, then there is nothing in the Kafka. But if you don't have a clear separation of the topics, what you have to focus and then learn, Kafka will be like a confusion part for most of you guys. Even for me as well, at least for me, while at the beginning time when I'm working on Kafka, when I see the Kafka topics or, you know, uh, Kafka, Kafka books and all, when I was referred, I was confused a lot because a clear separation, a clear understanding of the each and every topic is very important. So that's the reason divided the topics into a clear separations to understand what contains each and what to be focused more. So overview on Kafka API, Kafka core, Kafka connect, Kafka streams and Kafka SQL core. Then we will go with the Kafka installation. Kafka installation on single node cluster and then multi-node cluster. Single node cluster meaning your laptop. In your laptop, we will install the, in my laptop, we'll install the uh, Kafka. And also we'll install the Kafka single node and then multi-node. Both will install on the AWS cloud. So single node, single node cluster installation on local, on local and AWS cloud. Again, multi-node cluster installation we will do on the uh, AWS, not on local, AWS. We'll take multiple EC2 instances and then we will install the multi-node cluster. This is what your real time. This is what your real time. You will, we will face a lot of issues here, but we'll, you know, come across those issues and then uh, we'll successfully set up the multi-node cluster. Then storage architecture. So what is the Kafka storage architecture? What is Kafka topic, Kafka partition, replication, log segments, message offsets, and then index. So this is, of course, at this moment, this topics discussion may be Kafka storage architecture. This discussion may be, um, maybe this is completely new for you. Just to look at the course content, what I'm covering. That's it. Don't think beyond that. Okay. So Kafka storage architecture, how the Kafka will store the events. I used a word called event here. In your case, you just consider data. So how the Kafka store the data is what we will discuss in this storage architecture. Then we'll go to Kafka cluster architecture. So here, very, very important. Kafka 2.8, what is the architecture of the Kafka cluster um, before 2.8? And what is the Kafka cluster architecture after 2.8 is what we need to understand very well. Okay. However, we will understand as part of this Kafka cluster architecture, Zookeeper installation, and then the brokers set up, and then brokers connecting to the Zookeeper, managing the brokers with the Zookeeper, again, partitioning, fault tolerance, leader versus follower, lot of concepts we will discuss. So here, compulsory one interview question. Damn sure interview question on this partitions and fault tolerance. Partition allocation and fault tolerance, compulsory one interview question. Without the interview question, I believe if your interviewer is really worked on the Kafka, he definitely will ask these questions for you. Okay, then in Kafka cluster architecture, there will be a producer, there will be a consumer. Okay, there will be a producer, there will be a consumer. Okay, this producer, consumer, again, is something like uh, the distributed architecture where we have the uh, various models like P2P, point to point, right? And then um, P2, P2N, P2P, point to point, P2N, right? Maybe we have the various models. I'll, I'll, I'll come to those models and all. But there is a producer in Kafka. We'll talk about what is Kafka producer, what is record, partitioner, serializations and deserializers, custom deserializer, custom serializer, then JSON schema, AV Arbo schema, all these things we will discuss. Again, there is an important interview question, difference between the JSON schema, AV Arbo schema, and which schema we have to use, when we have to use. 
a very very important interview question and also interviewers will stretch you have you written any custom serializers or custom deserializers whenever you are working with the kafka okay so here compulsory one important interview question then how the kafka with the multi thread environment and the transactions in kafka producer then we'll discuss about the kafka consumers so consumer groups scalability and consumer partitions and offset okay i think this content is little tough for you to digest or understand but just go through it maybe few members who already might be working on the kafka for them i'm just showing this course content okay however then we'll go for the error handling and then retry and then recovery because in the streaming process right uh, sometimes you know when you are watching the ipl over your internet right you you have a 4k ultra hd smart tv probably and you connected uh, to the wifi and then you are watching the um, ipl sometimes what happened your due to your internet low bandwidth your streaming has been stopped okay error it will it might get shown you as error and after uh, maybe within the seconds if your internet is back then automatically streaming will start right so how the error handling we should have to and what is the retry how we can do a retry and then recovery mechanisms of the messages then kafka security using ssl then we will see the fault tolerance and data recovery very very important and 100% damn sure interview question then apache kafka integration with spring boot and microservices so this is what the part 1 and this part 1 may will take 2 to 3 weekends part 1 may take 2 to 3 weekends if that is the case then in the part 2 i'll cover kafka streams in one weekend one more weekend okay or else if we complete within the you know 3 week 3 weekends only that is well enough so part 2 i think part 1 is clear so part 1 this is what we going to cover in a nutshell part 1 this is what we going to cover in a nutshell kafka broker kafka client api and uh, kafka connect overview kafka streams overview ksql overview so these are all the topics in this ecosystem we we'll learn more about these two then in the kafka Uh, core concepts what we will learn is we will learn the producer consumer broker cluster these are all the concepts whatever i have discussed here right so broker consumer partitions topics all these things which are required for the kafka understanding we'll do here then in the part 2 i'll explain i'll go with the kafka streams not kafka connect framework and not kafka sql core concepts i'll go with the kafka streams only so your course content covers kafka ecosystem that means the part 1 for understanding everything about the kafka internals kafka working kafka integration with the spring boot and microservices then we'll go with the so after this part 1 is done we will do this project 1 movie tickets generating and then validating then we'll go to this kafka streams then when we done with this part 2 then we will do this video streaming to the multiple platforms application great now you got probably an idea how the course content is to be isn't it now let us start very important discussion why apache kafka of course why kafka first of all <clears throat> yeah oh there is separate discussion is happening in the chat <laughs> um okay um difference between kafka versus active mq versus rabbit mq what is avro i think just now you have seen the course content right so maybe you got the answer uh, murali krishna however i am not going to take the chat discussion now because it will waste your time and then my time but definitely i will give you the time at the end of you know uh, this workshop um, just before ending the 15 20 minutes i will give you the time please keep your questions with you and then ask me in the middle if we discuss maybe it will confuse right yeah okay excellent 
Now let us go and then start. Why Apache Kafka? Guys, if you understand why Apache Kafka, there is nothing in Apache Kafka. So let us start understanding why Apache Kafka. Okay. So before starting this why Apache Kafka, here are the materials I already have prepared for the part one. Part two, I have not prepared. Part two material I will prepare and then hand over. But part one, complete material I have prepared. And these materials I will upload in the Google Classroom. Once your payments will be done, then the Google Classroom access will be given to you. Perfect. Now, let us start why Apache Kafka. Guys, now we are starting into our actual course. Okay, we are starting into our actual course now. So let us see why Apache Kafka. So hope you have, you have seen, uh, you are now able to see my screen, I believe. Isn't it? So now let us understand. Before understand the Apache Kafka, we need to understand the events first. Why we need to understand the events? Because if you can see the official definition, as for the Kafka documentation, you can see Apache Kafka is an open source distributed event streaming platform. Okay, so what is Kafka? It is an open source distributed event streaming platform. Now you have to understand individually each and every word. What is open source? What is distributed? What is event? What is streaming? What is platform? As part of this, let us start understanding first what is event. Then we will understand what is streaming. Then we will understand what is event streaming. And again, we will understand what is event streaming platform. Okay, got it right. How we will go? So let us go and then first understand what is event. Okay, let's go here. Okay, so assume that we have a retail business. You just consider retail business in the sense, Demot or Reliance store or more, more market or whatever it is. You just consider one retail business. If we consider retail business, we will do the orders. Um, the orders we may return or the orders, whatever we placed will be shipped to our address, right? So this is retail online business. A retail business can be an online. Retail business can be. <clears throat> Are you providing recording of the class also? Yes, today's recording is also provided for you guys. Okay, please keep your questions and then ask me at the end of the session, guys. Because you know, if you ask your questions now, maybe I will lose my concentration because I, my opinion, because you came here, my first priority is you. So I have to give the answer for you. When I'll give the answer, the others will get deviated, isn't it? So keep your questions with you. Just allow me some time. I definitely will have a you know time with you uh, to clear and clearing all your doubts and all. Okay, fine, right? Just just allow me some time. Perfect. Okay, let us now understanding what is event because in the Kafka documentation they said Kafka is an Apache Kafka is an open source distributed event streaming open source distributed event streaming platform so now we need to understand what is event okay let us try to understand what is event i believe my uh, slides are visible to you right right so let me just increase it yeah hope you are now able to see it okay so we have assume that we have a retail business okay in the retail business, maybe retail business, retail online or retail offline, right? For example, Amazon. Amazon is what? Retail online. Demot. Demot is what? Retail online. So Demot is what? Retail offline. So we have the retail business in the sense, maybe it is offline, maybe it is online. In case if it is an online or in case if it is an offline, either of the case, first, whatever the products we have purchased, we need to order first. At least they will prepare the order copy, isn't it? When you go to Demart store, you have purchased a grocery for the month and what they will give you? They will give you the invoice. That means what? Before creating the invoice, they will first place an order. 
they will they will you know scan all the items and then first they will prepare an order copy okay then that order copy will be uh, you know placed for the payment so you will do the payment then you will get an invoice so first order then payment then invoice isn't it then by showing that invoice invoice will be two copies one is with them one is with you so whatever with you then you can showcase it at the, the gate of the demat and then come out that's it then you will be end with your shopping isn't it similarly if you want to return any item for example you purchased one tube light and uh, it is not working when you came to home and then test it then what you will do you will go and then you will return it isn't it or else you know in the demat you might have purchased one um, one tv you purchased assume or maybe in the reliance store you went to reliance store and then you purchased one home theater what they will do they will ship that home theater to you right first you have to make the payment before making the payment they will first create it as an order and then they will ask you to pay the payment once you done the payment they will give you the invoice and with that invoice they will start the shipment and the same invoice you have to showcase when they will deliver the item at your doorstep isn't it so this is what a retail business uh, case same in the case of the banking as well like service request stock tickets trade transactions so every every everything service request everything is an operation isn't it so assume that we have a retail business the business performs many activities however every business activity is played by an actor actor here in the sense maybe a person who is at the po system point of sale system in the retail store like in the demand counters are there in the counters uh, there were the persons are there those persons are called as the actors right or maybe that actor sometimes may be another system as well right so an actor is a, a a real life person or a machine or an automated process whatever it is so the action performed by an actor generates an event so what you will do basically what you will do you will go to uh, the billing counter okay you will go to billing counter and you will showcase your products what you have purchased then this person will scan each and every product right and then this person will place an order creates creates an order she will create an order and then as part of the order procurement she will ask you to do the payment when you do the payment then an invoice copy will come to you that invoice copy contains what data of all your products what you have purchased right what you have purchased the item the quantity and then the price so all this information there in the e invoice now for example invoicing is a business activity performed by a point of sale operator okay so please look at this business activity so this is the business activity now if you can see now we can see so the pvs operator is the actor uh, she will create the invoice that means what pvs operator is the action uh, uh, actor she will do an action and as an outcome we will get an event so what we understood now event is the outcome of the action performed by an actor right event is the outcome of an action performed by an actor right now you got the event now you got the meaning of the event event is an outcome of an action performed by an actor actor may be a pos operator actor may be another system actor may be an automated system whatever it is but it, if it will do some action for example uh, you are paying the uh, you know course fee let us say you might have scanned it right and then you done your payment as an outcome what is happening as an outcome you will getting the invoice that invoice you are sharing with the durga soft isn't it so what you have done you performed some action what is that action transferring the money or paying the money so some action you have done as an outcome of that action you got an event isn't it that event is what the invoice invoice got generated for you 
that invoice when you share to the Soft team, then they're going to give you the access to the classrooms, isn't it? So event is an action, sorry, event is an outcome performed by an action performed by the actor. Now this events, let's say this, this event, now we understood, right? The event, event is nothing but in our case, invoice we, we, we have we have seen. So what that invoice contains? Invoice contains the data. Invoice contains what? Data. The invoice copy contains what? Data. Data of the items what you have been purchased. So whatever the products you have purchased, those products information were there in the invoice. So event contains what now? Data. This is very, very important. Please focus. Like in our example, the invoice is an event which we got as an outcome once you do the payment and that invoice copy contains what all the order items, meaning data. So event contains what data. Now let us see. As we know the event, the next step is to capture the event data as the data object. Right. So this event data, meaning the, the invoice copy contains the data of all your items, all the items you have purchased. So this data capturing is very, very important. Why this data capturing is very, very important. Maybe this data, that means the invoice copy, they will send to shipping team so that the shipping team will start shipping your smart TV. So what they have, what they have given to the shipping team, the event, meaning the, the invoice copy in our example, that is nothing but what event, which contains the data, the data, nothing but the product or the items what have been purchased. So what we can understand now, so we can understand event, event is the data object, event is the data object. So here capturing the invoice event as a data object is a simple and creating a JSON object for the invoice. So whatever the printed copy we got it right from the from the printed copy we got from the uh, demand invoice systems right that printed copy data may be saving as a JSON data or maybe some other data in their database systems or some some other some other systems. But the point here is when we do the payment we got the invoice. So when we performed an action, we got the event. So event is nothing but an outcome of the action performed. And that event contains what the data. That's it. So that's it, right? I think it is clear for everyone. Okay. Event is data. Again, uh, you know, you guys are asking crazy questions for me. Event is data, na? <laughs> event is not action. Event is the data. Invoice is what? Invoice is nothing but event you consider. Is that an action? No, invoice is what? Data. What is the action here? The POS operator who is placing the order and then asking you to do the payment, right? That is called as an action. So as an outcome of that action, you got the event. That means the, um, yeah, that means the, um, that means the invoice you got. Now, assume the case. This is very simple case, but assume the case. So as we capture the event, the next step is transport the event. So that means what? We got the we got the invoice receipt. Now this invoice receipt should have to be sent to the various teams. Like shipment team required to take one invoice. Then um, uh, reward points team, loyalty and then reward points team should have to take your invoice because next time um, they will give you the discounts on the loyalty points you have been added with, isn't it? So likewise, the event, whatever we have captured as part of an action of doing the payment for the product you have been purchased, that event should have to be transported now across the multiple systems, meaning multiple applications. So whatever events we identify, they are likely to be generated continuously. This is one example. Likewise, in one town, for example, you consider Hyderabad, we have 100, 100 plus demand stores and consider all over India, we may have thousands of demand stores, right? In thousands of demand stores, for every second, for every millisecond or for every second or for every minute, 
these events are happening continuously I mean people are purchasing the products and then the invoices are generating for every minute every second probably that means event is happening every minute every second right so maybe within the time gap the events are happening not at all the same time maybe same time or maybe a fraction of seconds gap but that time gap we can ignore but the point here is what these events whatever are happening may be happening multiple one after the other or maybe you know at a time multiple events are happening right so whatever the events we identify they are likely to be generated continuously over a time as a series of events because you purchase in the same demand store you may have a 10 15 counters you purchased one item other purchased other items a lot of people purchased more you know many items each and every person is doing the payment and for them the invoice copy is generating that means events are happening there so in one store many events are happening likewise we have the many stores many events may be happened isn't it please carefully catch the point here very important this is okay in one demand store not only you there are many members are purchasing in a day lakhs of transactions are happening in a day lakhs of transactions are happening in a day lakhs of events are producing in a second in a minute overall the india maybe lakhs of invoices are generating right now the problem is what there is one problem here carefully observe please so okay so whatever the events we identify they are likely to be generated continuously over a time as a series of events these events are produced one after the other maybe concurrently maybe right we are not sure but the events are producing continuously so for our PYS example the invoicing is not a one-time activity the operator keeps generating the invoices one after the other for example if you take one operator that operator will keep on generating the invoices one after the other once you've done your payment then the queue the person will be in the queue will come to the come to do the payment again once that person done then the other person who is behind the behind the person will come to the queue like one POS operator if you can take one POS operator can generate multiple events one after the other right likewise in one demand store many of the POS systems many of the POS operators many POS operators will generate many events many many invoices that is only in one store consider a city where it is having a hundreds of stores considering the country where we have a thousands of stores so thousands of stores lakhs of events are generating per a minute or per a second over a period of time you just consider right so this series of events is what we term as a stream of events got it now the series of events the generating the series of events meaning the events generating one after the other continuously is called as what stream of events stream of events now we connected we understood what is event now we understood now what is event stream right got it now you got the event and you got the event stream okay now let us get into a few of the problems what the problems we have here in real time okay so here pos actor one pos operator can generate a many stream of events over the period of time i think you are following me or not i'm, I'm not sure but see the please observe the carefully observe the things event event meaning outcome of an action that contains what data so in in one demand store many events are generating one pos operator is generating many events the series of events the series of events called as event stream or stream of events the series of events generating are called as stream of events excellent excellent now let us go and then see the uh, you know how we can transport these series of events now right so we have the series of events and these series of events are generating in a time gap right so now the stream of events is a natural phenomenon of the business any business you can take it is a natural phenomenon stream of events mult should be happened for every transaction one event should be generated and the stream of events should be happened for, for every business it is common phenomenon 
right? So all we need to do is now how we can transport these events, multiple events generated to many systems, right? So now we have to think about transporting the events. Hope you are able to see my screen and it is visible, I believe, right? So here is the POS system and uh, we have a shipment service, we have a analytics service. So whatever the payment we made, we got the invoice and that invoice maybe you need to send to shipment service to ship the product to your doorstep and should be give to analytics service to have the you know anal 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 analytics or you know the reports uh, or the customer data with the with the particular retail store okay now how we can transport the event among the many systems or many applications that is the biggest challenge for us now okay so how do we transport these events from the place of origin to the place where we want to process them right how do we how do we transport these events so transporting events from one place to another place is a common requirement so if we take a, the microservices architecture if we take the microservices architecture we create a bunch of sample applications so e is taking care of a specific responsibility forget about the microservices architecture now you may be confused but you just consider only the retail store right so the below screenshot this screenshot is showing us the invoice event that is generated at the pos is need to be sent to shipment service and this shipment service would be interested in scheduling the shipment of the items in the invoice so whatever the items in the invoice, this team will ship the items. And similarly, the analytics server, the analytics service would also need to know about the invoice event and take into account for analyzing the sales pattern. Weekly they are purchasing or monthly they are purchasing or what items they are purchasing just to analyze the sales pattern. We, this say analytics service also requires the invoice. Perfect. Right now, the problem is how we can transport this event. Okay, how we can transport this event. Okay, now as we know that event as a data object, right? Event contains the data, meaning invoice contains the data. So consider it as an event. Event contains the data. So as we know that event as the data object, which we want to move those JSON objects from the place where they are generated to the location where they need to be processed. So from here to here, from here to here, we need to transport the event. Okay. So this transportation requirement appears to be a one-to-one -one relationship. That means here the POS system, one POS machine to, we need to transport the event, meaning the invoice, whatever the invoice generated from this machine, we need to transport to shipment. And from here, we need to transport to analytics. So when we think about from this POS, it is one POS which need to send the invoice to many one POS which need to send the invoice to many, many services. So this is one to many. If you can see from the one POS point of view. Okay. However, if you can see the shipment service point of view, the shipment service will get the invoice from the many POS and analytics service will get the invoice from the many POS. In a demand, we have the 15 counters, right? So from the counter one, the shipment service will get the data. Counter two, it will get the data. Counter three, it will get the data. Counter four, it will get the data, meaning invoice. So one shipment service will get the data from the many invoice, many, many POS machines. So when we think about the shipment service and then analytics service, it is many to one. When we think about this POS, it is one to many. Now let us understand this with the clear picture. Okay. This is the original problem statement now we got. Okay. So how to transport it now? I think you are following me, right? Please let me know if you need a break for five minutes or 10 minutes. I definitely will do that because continuous listening is also a problem, but we will lose the, you know, that flow if we take the break. That is the reason I'm not giving any breaks. Please follow. Now, one PO system, second PO system, third PO system. Likewise, we have the mini PO systems. These are all PO systems. We call it as the event producers, right? Event producers. Now, these event producers will produce the invoices to the 
inventory, analytics, loyalty, shipment, finance, data lake. So these are all the services for them. These events will be produced by the producers. Now, these are all the services, right? Shipment service, finance, loyalty, inventory. These are all called now consumers because they are getting the data from these POS machines and they are consuming the data. Here, each and every each and every operation is called as here if you can see uh, one one thing is calling uh, sending the data to one pos is sending the data to data lake the same pos is sending the data to analytics same pos is sending the data to inventory see these blue lines you carefully observe blue lines and this pos is sending the data to shipment and then finance similarly this orange one sending the data to data lake analytics inventory loyalty shipment and then finance likewise many pos machines will send the data or event to many many services many other services it is a many to many it is a many to many right so assume there are many pos systems in our store if you have a multi store business they are spread across the stores so if you are accepting online orders then from the online also we'll get the invoices. Now, if you can see here, there is no single destination. There are many destinations where the POS machines have to send the invoice copy. Not only one destination, not only inventory, not only loyalty, not only shipment. There are many places where these POS machines need to send the data, right? So the invoice is required by the finance, shipment, inventory, planning, loyalty, analytics, and data lake, long-term storage, and many more systems. So how do we solve that many-to-many -many streaming requirement, right? So from the many producers to the many consumers, how do we stream the events? Again, stream of events, nothing but what? The events generating one after the other over a period of time is called as what? Stream of events. So those stream of events how we can distribute or how we can send from the many POS terminals to the many consumers like inventory, analytics, shipment, loyalty, finance, data lake, for the many other services, how we can transport the event, right? So that is the problem. Now you got the problem, right? So as soon as you do the billing at the DMART POS counter, point of sale counter, you will get one invoice. That invoice immediately should have to be sent to all these departments, analytics department, store department, loyalty department, shipment department, finance department. For all these departments, the invoice copy should have to be sent. So you are only the one customer. You may be purchased only one product or maybe multiple products, but you will have only one invoice. So that invoice need to be sent to many of the departments. So throughout the day, not only you write, many members will purchase, many invoices will be generated, and many invoices should have to be sent to many departments. Now, how these invoices will be sent continuously? Because just in a minute, in a second, overall the India in the demand store, in a second, in a minute, just think about how many purchases are happening. So all these are what? If invoice is generating, even invoice is sending to all these departments. So how it should be happened continuously, right? So how we can solve the problem of sending the invoice copy to all these departments continuously. So, so each connection here, if you can see each connection, whatever this retail uh, machine having the connect connection to these backend applications or the departments, each connection between the source and destination is a stream now. Why we, okay, here you guys, please understand carefully. This is very, very important point. The sentence itself is very, very important sentence. Okay, please focus. What it is saying is, I think if you understood whatever I'm discussing so far, if you understood, this is easy for you to understand. Each connection between the source POS mission and to the destination departments is a stream. What does it mean? What does it mean? From a single POS system to the many departments, a continuously invoices will be sent one after the other. 
that is nothing but this sentence meaning is so each connection between a source and destination becomes a stream obviously because from the one machine to the various departments continuously the invoices need to be sent one after the other because the customers are there for the demand store and the customers will keep on purchase the products over all over the india then obviously each and every pos machine should have to be continuously in touch or connection with the with the all other departments applications it is practically impossible right it is practically impossible for the for the pos machine it is practically impossible for the pos machine to send the invoices to 20 different services continuously practically impossible guys in one minute or maybe another time or one another time the pos machine will get the issues connectivity issues network issues right maybe these consumers also consumer applications also may be down at that moment right now here is the actual problem starts please focus more actual problem starts here okay just to take two minutes of break at least i'll go for the water and then come back two minutes of break 11 9 it is 11 11 i'll be back because the actual problem is starting now okay so just give me two minutes i'll be back Thanks a lot, guys. I'm back. Okay, now the actual problem is starting. <clears throat> what is that actual problem? So, in the demand stores, not only in the demand store, you can take any retail store, the POS machines continuously sending data to the other systems, it is practically impossible. Definitely, we will get the connectivity issues, we'll get the you know internet issues, or you know, POS machine problems, or maybe the application problems so many issues now the now the actual problem arises a customer purchased a product and the invoice copy is sending to the shipment service okay while sending it to the shipment service assume the shipment service is down okay shipment service is down at this moment but this is continuously sending the data so now after uh, exactly two to three minutes, shipment service is back. Now the shipment service is taking the data. Let's say this, this is sending message one, invoice one, invoice two, invoice three, invoice four. Shipment service got broken down and then come back after two minutes. At that moment, this is sending the invoice number eight, invoice number 10, invoice number nine. So this shipment service is only receiving invoice number eight, invoice number nine, invoice number 10. Now, what about the invoice number five, six, seven, eight, or at least five, six, seven? Customers paid the amount, customers went to home, customers maybe expect the item will be delivered to you within the some period of time. But the shipment department is not received the invoice copy. One week gone, two weeks gone, three weeks gone. Customers will do what? Start complaining. They have not received the product. Now, assume they went and then checked the POS side, POS send the invoice, check the shipment side, shipment not received the invoice. Then where that invoice will gone? Where that invoice were, where that invoice was gone? 
right? Right, continuously sending where that invoice was gone now. So these problems we may get. So how do we solve this kind of problems now? Okay, shall we go as a database? Database as an alternate to this one? Meaning, can we use database to solve this problem? Okay, so let us try to evaluate the database as an alternate. The below screenshot shows a possible solution for the given problem using a database. Let's say this POS system will send the invoice copy to the database, database stored in it, and then from the database, shipment service is getting it. Let's say invoice is sending. <laughs> Let's say POS system is sending invoice one, invoice two, invoice three, invoice four, 10 invoices. Then the shipment service is taking the invoice one, invoice two, invoice three, 10 invoices. Let's say shipment service is gone after four invoices and came back after two minutes. Then shipment service will still have the storage of the invoice five, invoice six, invoice seven, invoice eight, invoice nine, invoice 10. So this is primarily solving the problem of the data losses what we discussed in our earlier screen, right? So this is now solving the problem. If you have the database, this is solving the problem, correct? But now here, one more problem is there. If you use the database, what is the problem? Let us see. So we can place a database in between and simplify the minute to minute relationship. Putting a database simplifies it to a minute to one uh, from the perspective of the event producers. Event producers, one event producer, are one POS machine sending many POSs to this database. Likewise, it is a one POS machine, many POSs, many invoices sending to the database. So it is one to many. So from the perspective of the event producers, it is many to one, meaning many invoices are sending to one database. Please, please note this point. Okay. Carefully observe this point. Here, one POS machine is sending many invoices to many invoices it is, it is sending to one database system. It is many to one now. So if we just look at a producer, it is merely a one-to-one -one relation with each producer. So here, if you think about the producer wise, not the event wise, many events are reaching to one database. One producer is sending the many events to one database. Right. So similarly, one to many, if you look at the event consumer side. So consumer is receiving many events from one uh, database and uh, it is also one to one, meaning one consumer is receiving the data from one database. As you. OK, here that is not the important one. The important one is what database solved the problem of the data last year. But here is one problem we have. Let us see what is that problem is. OK. So we look at an individual consumer, then this is fine. The event producers such as POS terminals and our online web store, they're all persist the JSON object into a database. Let's say this is MongoDB or let's say DynamoDB. So each and every POS machine is storing the invoice as a JSON object into this database, consider. The event consumer such as finance, shipment, inventory, planning, loyalty services, these are all other side of the database, right? So other side of the database, these are all consumers to the database and then taking the data from the databases. So they merely consume those events from the database. Here, event meaning data, event meaning object. Object contains the data. So we already have seen invoice is what? A paper. Invoice is a paper that contains all your items purchased, but what that paper contains? Data, the data is storing into the DB in a JSON object. And that data, nothing but the event, is taken by these shipment analytics and many other department services, right? So the producers and the consumers are now decoupled using this database. Earlier, producers are consuming or directly connected together. We call it as a stream, but there is a chances of having the data losses. So if we place the database in the middle, then what happened? When the database is in the middle, this database decoupled the consumers and then the producers. And we do not have a direct connection 
between the producers and then the consumers. So this solution appears to be good alternative for the data lossing problem what we have discussed. But here we have one more challenge. Okay, what is that challenge? We can use the database, of course, but database is solving the data losses. But here is one problem we have. So what is that problem? Let's go and then see the problem. Challenges with the database. So using database table to design a stream of events would be a tricky solution because database table does not naturally represent stream of events. This statement is very, very important. So please make a concentration on this statement. Database table does not naturally represent say stream of events. Why? We will conclude uh, in, in a couple of slides, in a couple of discussions. Okay, now consider one scenario where the database is not suitable for the stream of events. Consider, okay, consider one scenario. A typical database system records every insert and update transaction into a log file. Do you know this? Every database is internally maintaining a log file. So database is nothing but a file system only. On the machine, database is nothing but a file system only. Okay. I, I think I can showcase even that as well, um, but maybe um, database is storing the data in the files only, internally. Okay, whoever attended my Docker and then Kubernetes, they might have imagined this one, right? So they they might uh, they might have imagined this one. So just um, uh, you know, uh, database is storing the data in the file system. Okay, now database is storing the log entries in the log file. Okay, now here you can see the problem is the logging is necessary for the database to handle the failures. So it is it will log the data. However, the tables are the aggregated and mutable materialized. This you can't understand now. Let me explain. Here you can see. I let me increase little. Yeah, now you can see here. So this is invoice number DAMB509 which is inserting the invoice into the db okay which is inserting the invoice into the db now this is another invoice number damb708 which is also creating into the db yes two are created damb708 damb509 two are created okay how many events two events produced from the pos machine this is for one customer invoice this is another customer invoice Later, what happened, you know, the customer returned one item. Customer returned one item. And customer want to get the money by returning that item. Then the update, the POS operator or maybe the, the demand store, the person who is taking the return items, right? That guy have taken the uh, invoice and then updated the invoice by minusing one item. Okay, that is also one event happened, right? Updating is also one event, right? Creating the invoice is one event. Updating is also one event, isn't it? Clear, na? Updating is also one event. But if you can see this, how many events are happened now? Three events. Two new invoices are created. One already created invoice is updated. But in the DB, how many records we will have? Two records only. Right. So whatever DAMB initially have the price 3953, that now the price as 3133 because two items or three items were removed. They want the money written back. So they return the items in the demand store and then they have taken the money back. So now the invoice is updated with the 3113. But here you can observe how many actions performed. Three actions performed. Invoice created for one customer, invoice created for another customer. Again, invoice is updated for one customer. Three actions are performed. But in the database, how many invoices we have, right? So we have only the updated, updated one, right? So now it is losing one event specific data. So this can be resolved actually. Programmatically, this can be resolved. We can the history, we can maintain one history table or we can maintain one audit table. But that is what programmatically you have to do a lot of coding 
to achieve that for example as if 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 you are all the java developers you might know the hyperbolic inverse con history and concept right so you use that then you will enable the auditing so maybe you will create an history table and that history the history will be maintained but how much coding you have to do for that there are two to three uh, joining again the joining will each your performance right? because it is um, inheritance concept of one to one one to one relations definitely to your performance okay we can handle it so we can handle it this problem can be handled but that problem if we can handle it is not a big deal to handle but if you handle that problem we have to write a lot of code changes right so that is the reason we are saying database table does not naturally represent a stream it is not suitable for the stream because a stream can be a create operation stream can be an update operation stream in the sense series of events series of invoices will be generated invoices may be new payments invoices may be updated meaning few members will return their items and then update the invoice in the case of updating in the database we don't have the evidence of the operation happened so here it will show created by the operator one but later it will show updated by the operator two so we are losing the history who created this invoice we only have the data who updated in our system so this is the problem with the database however we can handle it you can take one more table called history and whatever the data operation here you can dump into there you can handle it but think of the think about the performance lakhs of lakhs of data it is producing events are generating per minute per second lakhs of lakhs of events are generating per minute per second right so those lakhs of records it is generating storing lakhs of records in two or three tables is good practice and it person no because the performance will be severely get affected right maybe it is noise scale as well you can see mongodb sir i will use mongodb i don't want to use um, you know the rdbms yes you can use mongodb as well or you sir i will use the uh, dynamo db which is stretchable extendable right durable yes you can use it but the problem is what here we might lose the auditing and then history information if we go with such databases right so these are the problems that we have with the database yes so this is what this is what hence instead of using a database table we want to evaluate something that naturally represents an event stream what is that interesting what is that that is that is nothing but kafka that is nothing but kafka so this is again information about um, database log files and uh, uh, so we can use the kafka there right hope everyone now connected right kafka perfect now what is kafka so apache kafka takes the same idea of representing the event stream using the immutable log entries here here we have to understand this concept immutable log entries database what happened database table record invoice is created then whoever updated invoice the same record is updated that means it is a mutable mutable log mutable log entry database is maintaining the mutable log entries that is the reason the same record we are able to update it whatever the record we created that record is able to update because that is a mutable record so kafka doesn't maintain that kafka maintain everything as a new either it is new record a new invoice or updated invoice everything is a new entry for it right so now kafka will represents a stream of events using immutable log entries it won't update the entry what it have created in the log file rather it will create a new entry for whatever the events it is getting 
So if we take the earlier solution and replace the database system with Apache Kafka, then we can see the system like this. Now we have the Kafka and Kafka will keep on store the data into these uh, log entries, log files, right? And every data is a new, every event is a new record here. 100% we will have the track of all the records, right? So that is what the Kafka comes and then solve the problem. Okay, in Kafka, in Kafka, Kafka implements the log files and sits in the center of the streaming infrastructure, right? The producers, meaning the POS machines, sends the events, meaning the invoices to the Kafka. Kafka persists those events into the log file and the event consumers are on the other side. They read those events from the Kafka and then process it. So these events, the, the, these events will be read from the Kafka by these consumers. Kafka internally will store the events in a log file, right? So here, again, infrastructure-wise also, we have little issues in maintaining these log files, but we have the solutions as well. So the solution delivers the benefits such as decoupling of producers and consumers as well, and simplifying the many-to-many -many relationships. Now, any number of events can continuously stream to this Kafka. Kafka will store everything in the log directory or log file, and then Kafka use from the Kafka, the consumers will get the data continuously. Now there is no data losing. There is no mutable records. Everything is immutable here, right? And it is storing the data directly in the file systems. Definitely it is lightweight compared to the databases. So this is what the Kafka is. That's all guys. Now you understood what is Kafka. Sorry, not what is Kafka. Why Apache Kafka is what you have understood now. Okay. Now let's see what is Kafka. How many kinds of you know, uh, Kafka uh, installations available in the market now? Okay. Um, Kafka is a open source. Okay. I have to say, Apache Kafka is an open source. So Kafka is a distributed event streaming platform. Now we understood what is event, what is streaming. So Kafka is building a platform which can handle the lot of events and then which will deliver the lot of events to other services. So it will infrastructure of the Kafka or the Kafka installation architecture we call it as a streaming platform. However, I'll again discuss about this Kafka platform and all in our coming up sessions. But what is Kafka now? Why Kafka you understood? What is Kafka now? So Kafka is distributed event streaming platform. Why? It is distributing the events, stream of the events it is distributing, right? For the many systems, meaning many applications. To do that, it have a sophisticated platform. Platform in the sense, it has its own architecture, cluster architecture. I'll explain that. Now, how many types of uh, Kafka installations we have? So I want to give you the clarity here. So we, in, in the market, we have the two kinds of the Kafka you can see. One is Apache Kafka. Second one is Confluence Kafka. So what is this Apache Kafka? It's an open source free Apache uh, 2.0 licensed version. It is completely open source. And again, coming to this Confluent Kafka, we have two options. One is community version. Second one is enterprise version. So community version have, again, um, completely free. Community version, uh, community version is completely free, but the develop, uh, enterprise version is not free. So we will use the Apache Kafka for our part one, and we will use the Confluent Kafka for our part two. Confluent Kafka, um, Confluent Kafka uh, Community Edition, we will see for the part two. Okay, now the differences between the Apache Kafka and then Confluent Kafka, we'll discuss in our coming up sessions when we really start the installation. 
that's all guys from my side now let us start the question hours do you have any questions for me i see a lot of questions right yeah sir yeah. Uh, i have one doubt sir yeah. So I don't know uh, before this session. I don't know anything about this Kafka. And mm -hmm. in previous uh, previous slides, you uh, you mentioned the Spring Boot is a requirement. Mm -hmm. So can you just put some light, like what okay. concepts in a Spring Boot we must know before starting this Kafka? Okay, not all the concepts actually. Um, okay, just uh, let me showcase something now. As the question asked, let me showcase something now um okay uh just let me go to one moment guys uh, just let me go here source code okay i just i just would like to showcase if so we have the three spring boot applications we call them as microservices even so movie tickets generator movie tickets validator movie tickets consumer so what we have to know here, we have to know here about the Spring Boot application structure, Spring Boot starters, and basically how the Spring Boot will work. If you know that, well and good. And actually, I would like to say one more thing also. Uh, the part one, whatever I have shown, the part one course content, right? This entire part one, we will execute on complete command line. Complete command line. So we will learn the Kafka concepts using the complete command line utility. Then whatever the concepts we learn, we just apply it for the Spring Boot application and then microservices. So if you want to learn, though you don't know my Spring Boot microservices, if you want to still learn the concepts, yes, you can still learn the concepts. And whatever the technology you know, implement it on them. It's not a big deal. Okay, so I have taken the Spring Boot and microservices as they are in the market, and then the interview questions are there how to integrate Kafka with the Spring Boot microservices, what are the use cases, right? So that's how I have taken this one. Got it? Huh? Uh, yes, sir. Um, uh, I just have last question, sir. As mm -hmm. you uh, uh, just demonstrated that the Kafka is solving that problem, uh, mm -hmm. maybe I am wrong, sir, but i have this question can, mm -hmm. can we use sms there obviously sms also we can use but the problem is what you know uh, your question is 100 percent absolutely correct question but we need to understand about messaging system that is our next topic so in next topic we will see point to point and then pups and subs model so point to point meaning messaging system with the point to point, we have one limitation and pups and subs, we have one limitation. So I'll discuss those limitations. And that's the reason we'll go for the Kafka. Even Kafka is also a kind of pups and subs model only. Kafka is also using the messaging system, meaning Kafka is also a messaging system architecture one. So, but it will solve the problem that were there with the ActiveMQ, RabbitMQ, it will solve that problem. Okay, they are just messaging brokers, but Kafka is more than that. Kafka is not just a messaging broker. Kafka is event streaming platform. There's a lot of meaning for that. Okay, in our next sessions, I'll discuss about this one. Sir, so I have two questions. So wherever we are using this uh, ActiveMQ, RabbitMQ, we can use Kafka. Yeah. If it is required, if your project have the streaming capacity, meaning if your project have the streaming requirement, use Kafka. Of, or of course, for example, RabbitMQ you have taken. So RabbitMQ is, is not really, uh, you know, clustered environment. Then you will go for the ActiveMQ. So ActiveMQ, again, you will take the JooKeeper and then ActiveMQ instances. But the data that is storing in the ActiveMQ is in-memory database. Again, it is kind of H2DB. Again, your database problems will arise. So that is the reason we are going for this Kafka. So problem is two things here. Point number one, if it is just messaging delivery, go with the a, any of the messaging systems. It is not only the messaging delivery, it is streaming also. Heavy infrastructure or continuous, here streaming meaning what, you know, two, 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 two situations guys 
point number one messaging meaning what you know for example when the user is created an email should have to be sent so that email we can send and then store in the um, message broker like uh, RabbitMQ, ActiveMQ, and then we can send it, we can deliver it to the consumers, like, you know, your inboxes. H how frequently it will be happen? Maybe, 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 you know, very less time. But comparing to this POS uh, use case, every minute, every second, continuously data, is, data flow is there. If that is the case, then go for the Kafka. Well, business demands have in the continuous events generation, continuous events consumption, go for the Kafka. If occasional events, occasional uh, messages, don't go for Kafka. Go for the message brokers. Am I answered? Got it right? Understood. Yes. And right. moreover, if you compare to RabbitMQ, Kafka is distributed, right? Exactly. Kafka is distributed. RabbitMQ is not distributed. That's the problem. Yeah. Yeah. Sir, so when we say distributed, what exactly it means, sir? It means uh, it, uh, like it is uh, communicating with the multiple systems, uh, right? Uh, which one you are talking about? Distributed. Uh, yes, yeah, sir. When we when we say something like uh, we just say now that uh, the Kafka is distributed, then uh -huh. what exactly okay. it means, sir? Okay. Okay. The point is what you know here. In order to answer that, first we need to know about this P2P, point to point, and then point to end, or maybe publisher subscriber mechanism. So RabbitMQ will deliver one message at a time to the one consumer. Of course, there may be more than consumers. Again, in the RabbitMQ, there were mechanisms. If the message is consumed by one person or one service, the message may not be available to the other person. For example, your Ola ride booking, Uber ride booking. What will happen? It might, when you, when you book the ride, it will go to all the drivers surrounding your location. Whoever accept the booking, then the booking won't be visible to other drivers. That means what? The consumer, the Ola auto driver accepted the booking and then take in the event. So the event has been deleted from the queue. So the other persons don't see that, isn't it? So this is what point to point. Okay, so this is one consumer, one producer. Of course, many it is sprinkling the data to many, many consumers, but if one consumer will take the data, then the data won't be available. So this is called as, uh, there is one term actually, uh, yes. Message persistency, transient message persistency. We'll discuss, guys, actually, you know, when we come to this discussion, we'll discuss. But the, the answer for the question is RabbitMQ, RabbitMQ is not distributed in the sense RabbitMQ uh, will distribute the messages to the many consumers. That is fine. But if any of the consumer will take out the message, that message won't be available to other consumers. So hence, we can say it is only point to point distribution, not pops and subs distribution. And RabbitMQ is not supporting the cluster architecture. Okay. To have the cluster architecture with the messaging broker, we have to go for the ActiveMQ. So if we go to the ActiveMQ, then we have two, again, two solutions. One is once the consumer receives the message, delete the message. Or there are mechanisms actually, fan out and um, the, the persist or you know, the type of the messaging model we can choose. Assume if the message need to be in the broker itself, even though the consumer consumed it, then how long it needed to be, how long it, it need to be kept it, right? So it will be kept um, forever if you don't uh, remove it. That is the problem with the active MQ. So auto flesh out concept was not there. So when comparing, there were a lot of concepts will come guys. But the only answer, uh, meaning as per your, for your question, my answer is what? Yes, RabbitMQ is not uh, supporting the cluster, whereas Kafka is supporting the cluster, point number one. RabbitMQ is P2P, Kafka is pubs and subs, point number two. RabbitMQ can also be used as pubs and subs, but the data persistency into the broker 
can't get automatically deleted. Whereas in the Kafka, the message persisted will be deleted automatically after seven days. So these are all the finite differences between these two. Got it? Hope you hope I answered right. Sir, I have two questions, sir. Yes. Uh, for the okay, okay. in order to install, what are the system requirements for that? Uh -huh. System requirements are 100% we need the 8GB machine. 8 GB machine. So let's have mostly we will do what actually AWS installation only. But if you want to do in your local also, um, keep the 8 GB machine. And of course, uh, it, it is coming up with the minimum 100 GB um, hard disk, right? So 100 GB or 50 GB, that's okay. So, but 8 GB machine is the minimum requirement to have the RAM faster. Mostly we will go with the AWS installation only. I'll explain how to create the AWS instances and all. Um, but in your local, you just come up with the 8 CPU machine. And one okay. more question, sir. As you said, Apache in, in Kafka, mm. like uh, event uh, that mm. uh, insertions will be happen. Every record we will have. In mm. case of like uh, DMAT, if we want to return, we have mm. to update the record. So Correct. in this case, uh, we need to update in the DB as well, right? No, no. Here, when we go for the Kafka, we don't have the DB, right? So let's say demand is update. Uh, you know, when we return the items, demand person is updating, right? That guy operator is updating. It will become as one more entry in our log, in our Apache Kafka storage. It will come as one more entry with the same invoice number. So now with the same invoice number, we have the two entries. One, the invoice created one with the like 8,900 rupees and another invoice we can see last updated with the 8,300 rupees. So the latest invoice we will take. Okay, got it. Okay guys, let me announce one thing. Tomorrow, let us connect. Okay, tomorrow again, let us connect from 10 a.m. to 12 p.m. same time for this weekend. And from the next weekend onwards, let's connect in the um, like 9 a.m. to or 9 a.m. to 12 p.m. or something like that. Okay, if you like the demo and then if you wish that it will be helpful, go and then do start your registration process today. And tomorrow again at 10 a.m. we'll meet and then discuss the why Apache Kafka we completed now. Then tomorrow we will discuss what is Apache Kafka, who created that Apache Kafka, meaning who is the, uh, what is the organization, you know, the inventor of that Kafka. And then what is the difference between Confluent Kafka, Apache Kafka, which one we have to go. So these are all the things we will see tomorrow. And tomorrow we'll do the Kafka installation, Apache Kafka installation on the local machines and also on the cloud machines. Then we will discuss the Kafka topics, like you know the core concepts of the Kafka core API we will discuss. That's all guys from my side. Any questions? Sir, Still sir, will this the last question, sir. Uh, one minute. Huh? Let me read these uh, messages first. Okay. What is the database used for Kafka? Okay. Kafka doesn't use database. Kafka will use the file system on our machine. Okay. It don't use database. Rajesh Kumar. Kafka will use the log entries. That's it. It will create the files. So files will be partitioned. There is a concept of partitions. I will discuss, but Kafka don't use any database. Point number one. Then Amit Mohanty, for tomorrow, same link we will join? No, tomorrow link will be changed because today you have to go, you, all of you guys, if you like it, you have to go through the payment process and then complete your registration. Then the another link will be sent to you. Tomorrow, same time, 10 a.m. to 12 p.m., same time. But in the next week, subsequent weekends onwards, let us change the time to like eight, 9 a.m. Okay. And Shake, sir, will this recording be shared? Absolutely, this recording will be shared. Can you share the recording for today? Yes, yes, guys, don't worry. Recordings will be shared to you. Okay, recordings will be reached out to you. Right. Um, Saurabh, sir, we need to have local machine set up to create topic for message producing and message consumption. Yes, yes. Local machine, first we will set up on the local machine and we will see the concepts. Then we will go for the cloud machine, AWS cloud instance. Then there we will set up the multi, multi node installation. That nothing but cluster installation we will do. In local, single node installation. In AWS, multi node installation we will do. That is real time. In your local, is not real time. Okay. Vignesh Raghavan will cover Kafka Stream API in Spring Boot project. Yes, yes, that is what our project two is start talking about. Project two is what? Video streaming, right? One 
Spring Boot application will upload the video files. Other two to three Spring Boot applications will stream the you know the videos like uh, photo shooting, right? Wedding wedding shoot, <laughs> right? So you can see the live streaming in in the other services. Yeah, that is what. Okay, uh, Saurabh, thanks, uh, Sub Subba Rao. Once the Kafka picks the new updated record, what about the old events in the log files? Yes, they will be there. Old events will be there in the Kafka log file and uh, updated event also will be there in the Kafka log file. Both are identified using the same invoice number. Okay, right. I, I, I think I have answered, right, Subba Rao? Yes. Um, Okay, Murali Krishna, by using this course can become Kafka admin. That means creating Kafka setup from scratch in various environments. 100%. There is no doubt at all. Okay, Ranjan R, payment link, please. A payment link will be sent by our backend team. And Srinivasu Reddy, all videos available for how many months for access? Three months. All videos are available for three months access. After three months, if you want the renewal, you can talk to backend team and then get it renewal. Okay, yeah, thanks a lot, uh, Kumar. You replied for that. Thanks. Sir, sir tomorrow 9 30, you have one more uh, demo session, right? Uh, event streaming, uh, CQRS, 10 a.m. We have that one. Uh, yeah, thanks a lot. Actually, I forget about this. Shall we connect tomorrow or else 8 to 10? 8 to 10? Okay, I'll I'll do one thing, guys. Tomorrow, eight to ten, let us connect because tomorrow is the first weekend, right? Let us spend uh, just two hours and then complete the installation. Then ten to twelve, I have the uh, I have no, the sir, nine thirty. You have nine thirty, yeah. Uh -huh. nine thirty. Okay, okay. Then we can connect something around seven thirty a.m. here because two hours of uh, seven thirty to nine thirty, let us connect. So two hours of the solid understanding is required. Okay, fine. So tomorrow let us connect again 7.30 a.m. to 9.30 a.m. And uh, on the paid link, this is very important, on the paid link. And from the next week onwards, let us uh, connect. I'll, I'll publish the date, I mean, time from the next week onwards. And again, from tomorrow 10 a.m. to 12 p.m., I have the CQRS, I think. Yes, CQRS. Thanks a lot. I, I really forget about that. So sorry. Yeah. So I, I am joining, the, that's why. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> Great guys. Okay. Se seventh, not same link, you know, uh, Shailesh. The link is the paid link. This is the demo link. Huh? The link will be the paid link. Uh, make it 9 p.m. Amit. Um, okay. For tomorrow weekend, uh, let us see it's 7.30 to 9.30 a.m. I think every weekend let us go with the same timing. But tomorrow let us see it's 7.30 a.m. to 9.30 a.m. Fine. Sir, just Great. have one doubt, sir. Uh, ah. Sir, uh, just like we have SNS in AWS, sir, which is using PubSub model. So same, this Apache Kafka is having its own no, PubSub. No, not same. SNS, SNS, SKS, and Kafka are not same. Not same because they are, again, just message brokers for the notification, for the queuing system, but they don't have the streaming capability. That is the reason. We will go for the CDN or we will go for the um, AWS streaming services there for us. Kinesis. Kinesis. Kinesis event streaming. So AWS Kinesis streaming is equivalent to our Kafka. Okay. But this SNS SQS is not the streaming platforms. They will store the data for a while and then they will send the data. Storing the data, sending data is not at all the point to meaning continuous streaming, isn't it? Of course, Kafka is also doing the same, but here SQS and SNS uh, are for the just, you know, um, not for the massive messages, not for the bulk messages or massive messages. If the massive messages or massive events are coming to this SQS, SNS, they will take a reliably more time to deliver to the customers, uh, being consumers. But Kafka is not like that. Okay, it is a clustered architecture. These are not clustered architecture. These are, you know, just broker architectures. Okay. Um, yeah. So one second. So one question I have. Uh, yes. when, when when you say event store, can I huh. think like it is a log file which Kafka is using? Correct. Okay. Correct. Exactly. So we don't rely on any third party event store. Huh. So it's a building, correct. correct? 
it is it is it is the it will create the files on the uh, you know kafka way in, in which directory we are installing the kafka right in that directory only it will create this log entries okay yep okay uh, sir if tomorrow i am unable to join the session are you able to provide the recording yes yes recordings will be provided uh, uh, vasant kumar recordings will be provided for all the joint students okay and record this recording will be provided for all the guys 85 members joined today for all those members this recording will be reachable yes tomorrow timing is 7:30 am to 9:30 am guys okay yes yes next weekend time timings let us uh, uh, discuss tomorrow and then tomorrow we will stick to the next weekend timings okay thanks a lot and uh, thanks sir, for your time. sir last question for some yes 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 for sure uh, uh, so uh, basically like for um, this uh, the memory right the log file generated in the local right where uh, kafka is installed right so we yeah. can route it into different uh, data sources like no sql right correct correct we can keep it we can route it like route kafka it. we can route it we can store maybe in the nfs server or we can maybe store cassandra in, or mongodb right cassandra or mongodb we can store but the kafka okay. will talk to only this log entry file okay, not okay, to okay. these systems Okay, so directly communication cannot be happen to data um, sources, right? Exactly, exactly correct. But we can route. Okay. Correct, correct. Okay. So, right. So uh, I have one doubt. Uh, so before joining the course, I want to just make sure that uh, the timings which we have uh, committed, right, that is 10 a.m. on the mm. weekend, right, uh, except mm. the tomorrow session. So is it going to be a 10 a.m. Uh, uh, going forward because uh, we have a conflict with other uh, training sessions which are exactly exactly so. exactly so uh, coming also coming weekends also let us uh, starts from 7:30 am to um, around um, uh, around 10 am something like that uh, on saturday because most of our other uh, other uh, uh, are on sunday i believe so saturday mm -hmm. or sunday we can have uh, i think they are on sunday so sunday only we can spend 7:30 am to 10 am but on the saturday again we can spend something like you know from 9 am to 9 am to probably 12 pm sunday we can saturday we can capture the yeah. most of the data I mean most of the class and then sunday we can spend 7:30 am to 10 am i think we can yeah. plan like this 7:30 yeah. will be early for me actually i have something personal so uh, can you is it possible like 8 8:30 uh sunday. sunday right actually yeah. the, the problem is sunday i am conducting one free free workshops so which are starting at 10 am sharp what we can do here you know we can make it like uh, we'll see we'll see that half an hour maybe we'll try to change we'll see but 7:30 is i think the good time 7:30 to 10 am is the good time mostly so we'll see afternoon session na sunday afternoon no no all the time talking about early morning <laughs> wake up is uh -huh. sunday that right. okay we'll discuss morning okay. is the fight for everyone so let us keep uh -huh. it in afternoon that's okay that's okay you know basically Please. saturday saturday timings are fixed for us right so about the sunday timings we can discuss in the saturday class and then we can majority of the folks if agree then that is the good good option even but the folks who are attending from the us that is a problem different uh, zone that is a problem so my opinion the best timing is what you know 6 pm on sunday 6 pm to at least 9 pm is the best time so but we can discuss on this timings on sunday in our saturday classes don't worry about it sure so sure, sure. yeah okay folks thanks a lot and then thanks your time you know thanks for giving me the opportunity Uh, for explaining my course content you now for showcasing my course content thanks a lot for that and uh, hopefully see you in the next classes i'm stopping my screen share and then see you tomorrow thanks a lot yeah thank you thank you